Before buying a 2022 or newer Toyota Tundra, you need to carefully consider your engine options. Should you buy the standard iForce non-hybrid, or should you buy the iForce Max hybrid powertrain? Let's take a look at the driving characteristics, power figures, as well as expected reliability, so you can make a solid choice without wasting thousands of dollars. If you enjoy automotive content and find this video helpful, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. All new Tundras come with a 3.4, or 3.5 if you're rounding up, twin-turbo V6 engine. The iForce engine in the base model SR comes with 348 horsepower and 406 pound-feet of torque. Most common is the iForce putting out 389 horsepower and 437 pound-feet of torque. This is the option that will be in most trim levels higher than the standard SR. The top-of-the-line iForce Max puts out 437 horsepower and a whopping 583 pound-feet of torque thanks to a 288-volt electric motor which is sandwiched between the engine and the transmission. The electric power produces an incredible amount of additional torque, making a huge amount of power in total. A common misconception is that the iForce Max is going to get better gas mileage than the regular gas powertrain because it's a hybrid. While that might be the case, Toyota designed the powertrain to produce more power, providing better acceleration and better towing capabilities, not necessarily to use less fuel. This is kind of why people buy diesel trucks, for more power and torque, which is handy when towing and hauling. While diesels are sometimes more efficient, the primary reason people buy them is for their incredible power. The non-hybrid trucks in a four-wheel drive Crewmax configuration are rated for 18 miles per gallon city and 23 miles per gallon highway. The iForce Max is rated for 19 miles per gallon city and 22 miles per gallon highway in a similar configuration, indicating that the miles per gallon ratings are virtually the same. Keep in mind that the iForce Max only comes on the higher trim levels, which are usually heavier with more equipment and features. With the added batteries and electric motor, the truck is considerably heavier, about 600 pounds heavier. That's like having an extra three passengers on board. It's not something that will change the driving experience when you factor in the extra power, but it explains, at least in part, why the fuel efficiency isn't really better. Basically, what you're gaining in power, you're also gaining in weight, meaning the end result is not much different. The iForce Max does have different driving characteristics. You'll notice the truck is less hesitant off the line, where the electric motor provides instant torque, where a gas engine would otherwise take a second to respond. This is also noticeable when you suddenly floor it. Part of this is due to a slower response of a gas engine when compared to electric, but the iForce does seem to have some sort of a throttle lag when accelerating from the stop. This is likely just a programming issue that Toyota can fix, but the iForce Max doesn't seem to have any hesitation. The instant response picks up the slack between the downshifts and spooling up of the turbos. The extra torque provided from the electric motor is hard to replicate when it comes to the instantaneous acceleration and response, which is why cars like Teslas are so insanely quick off the line when compared to naturally aspirated vehicles. Power when towing and merging onto the highway is really strong and comes on right away, and the combination of the maximum torque at just 2400 RPM makes power that will rival diesels. The hybrid does start and stop frequently. And while it's an extremely smooth transition as it pertains to hybrids, it can be annoying depending on how sensitive you are to that type of thing. When compared to a constantly running gas engine, hybrids continuously start and stop as you drive down the road, even at a steady speed, whereas the gas engine will only sometimes shut off when at a stop. If that constant starting and stopping isn't disruptive to you, great, but a lot of people are sensitive to it and find it extremely annoying. The iForce is by no means a slouch, really just the opposite, but the very slight turbo lag doesn't quite compete with the electric power. When it comes to 0-60 to 60 times, the hybrid might shave a half a second or so off the time, mostly due to its ability to jump off the line, but this isn't really substantial. When it comes to reliability, there's really no clear answer as to which option will be longer lasting. Of course, the hybrid has more parts, and added complexity generally leads to more repairs and failures down the road. It also has batteries, which will eventually need to be replaced. With the Prius, you can expect to need a battery replacement every 10 years or so, or every 150,000 miles, costing $1,000 and up. However, the electric motor is also assisting the gas engine in potentially reducing strain on the turbos, which could ultimately extend their lifespan. As far as hybrid reliability, 
Toyota has been producing hybrids, the Prius in particular, for about two and a half decades, and they've proven to be extremely long-lasting. In fact, there's really no reliability gap between hybrids found in the Highlander, Prius, and other Toyota products and their gas models. When it comes to choosing between the iForce and the iForce Max, reliability shouldn't really play a part. As far as towing heavy loads, the iForce Max totally nails it with its extra torque and lightning-fast response. The towing capability of the iForce Max is undoubtedly better thanks to the added torque and instantaneous response. The standard engine is an excellent performer as well, but let's be real, the hybrid is the real winner. As far as towing capacity, the ratings vary based on your cab configuration, options, and drivetrain, so there's really no clear answer as to which has the higher ratings. If you're really pushing the limit, you should probably consider a different option anyway. For 2022, Toyota finally added storage compartments under the rear seat, which owners have dealt with the lack of for years, leaving nowhere to secure belongings in the back, even on huge Crew Max models. Toyota finally listened to the feedback of Tundra owners and made a significant enhancement by introducing storage compartments beneath the rear seat. This addition addresses a long-standing concern among owners who, for years, contended with the lack of storage space. However, this storage is not available across all models, only on the non-hybrid models. The reason behind this lies in the utilization of the under-seat space by the vehicle's battery, which occupies the entirety of the area that could otherwise serve as valuable storage. The battery's placement under the rear seat compartment eliminates any rear seat storage. This presents the long-standing problem for owners who rely on that storage space to keep tools, tow straps, and other essentials. Another thing that is more important to some owners than others is the sound difference between the two options. The engine itself, of course, makes the same exact noise, so when you're accelerating hard or towing, you're not going to notice a difference. But the hybrid is going to sound like a Prius when the gas engine isn't on, like at stoplights, in parking lots, and other slow speed scenarios. When most Tundra owners are already upset that they no longer have a V8 and are now stuck with the sound of a V6, driving a Prius sounding equivalent is a tough pill to swallow, regardless of the other differences. The iForce Max is only available in the Limited trim and higher. It's an option on the 1794, Platinum, and Limited, and is standard on the TRD Pro and the Capstone. You're looking at a price difference of about $4,000 for the iForce Max, making it nearly impossible to recuperate any fuel savings, especially when considering the eventual battery replacement that will be needed. What type of buyer is the iForce Max ideal for? If you're going to be doing a lot of heavy towing and that instantaneous power is really important to you, you might decide it's worth the extra money. Hybrids are also geared more towards city driving, is they're most efficient at low speeds where the engine doesn't necessarily need to run, so if you do a lot of stop and go driving, you might see an increase in gas mileage. If you just want the top of the line powertrain, it's probably worth springing for, but if you're just going to use it normally and aren't concerned with marginally better towing, acceleration, or gas mileage, and prefer the lower initial cost and extra storage space, you're better off with the regular iForce. In 99% of driving situations, you're really not going to notice a difference in power. If you're still on the fence, you really need to get behind the wheel and test drive both the iForce and the iForce Max. For most people, the non-hybrid has more than enough power in terms of acceleration and towing, and you don't need to give up the underseat storage, and it's less expensive to purchase. For those who simply want the top of the line and find the positives outweigh any negative hybrid driving characteristics, it might be worth the added cost.